Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving charge moving perpendicular to a magnetic field. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that a proton moves through a vacuum chamber at a speed of 2.0 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. A perpendicular magnetic field of 200 micro tesla is applied. The direction of travel of the proton and the direction of the magnetic field are shown in the diagram below. So here we've got a proton moving to the right, our magnetic field is out of the page and it has a magnetic induction of 200 micro tesla. It then says to calculate the magnitude and direction of the force acting on the proton. Well because the charge is moving perpendicular to the field, we know we can use our relationship F equals QVB to find the magnitude. So for the magnitude, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F. We know that the charge Q is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The speed of the proton V is 2.0 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. And lastly B, the magnetic induction is 200 micro tesla, which we can rewrite as 200 times 10 to the minus 6 tesla. Writing down our equation, we have F equals QVB and substituting in the numbers, gives us 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 2.0 times 10 to the 7 times 200 times 10 to the minus 6. And if you put all of that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 6.4 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons for the magnitude. For the direction now, we can use the right hand rule where you would place your first finger, i.e. your index finger, and point it out of the page, i.e. out of the screen. You would take your middle finger and point it to the right in the direction that the proton's moving. And if you do that, your thumb will point upwards. However, because the right hand rule only works for negative charges, we need to reverse the direction of this force, which means we end up with a force downwards. So we can say for the direction, that using the right hand rule, the force on the proton will be downwards since it is positively charged, i.e. in the opposite direction to the force on a negatively charged particle. Question 2 says that an electron is moving at right angles to a magnetic field of magnetic induction 0.5 tesla into the page. The velocity of the electron is 2.0 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So there's the electron moving to the right and this time we've got the magnetic field going into the page or into the screen. And part A says to calculate the magnitude of the force on the electron, just like we did in question 1. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F. We know the charge in the electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We're just going to ignore the negative for this because we're only interested in the magnitude of the force. The velocity of the electron is 2.0 times 10 to the 5 meters per second and the magnetic induction B is 0 0.5 tesla. So writing down our equation, we have F equals QVB. Substituting in the numbers gives 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 2.0 times 10 to the 5 times 0 0.5 and putting all of that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons. Part B then says to state the direction of the force on the electron. To do this we need to use the right hand rule again so let's go back to the picture and we can see that our field this time is going into the page so if you take your first finger i.e. your index finger and point it in towards the page you would then take your second finger, i.e. your middle finger, and point it towards the right. And if you do that with your right hand, your thumb should be pointing downwards. And because we're dealing with a negatively charged particle, we don't have to flip the direction. So that means we can say using the right hand rule, the force on the electron will be downwards, i.e. towards the bottom of the page. Lastly, part C says to determine the radius of the circular path of the electron. So because the electron is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, it will follow a circular path and we can determine the radius by understanding what's going on. So we can say that the magnetic force causes a centripetal acceleration and therefore a centripetal force. And this means we can equate these two forces together because the magnetic force is causing the centripetal force to happen. So taking the magnetic force F equals QVB and the centripetal force equation F equals MV squared over R, we can equate the two to get QVB equals MV squared over R. We can now rearrange for the radius R and the easiest way to do that is just to swap this R with this QVB term. So we end up with R equals MV squared over QVB. And now you'll notice we've got a V squared in the top and a V on the bottom. So we can now cancel a V from the top and bottom to get R equals MV over QB. So our expression for the radius is R equals MV over QB, but we want to determine the actual value of this radius. So we need to sub in the numbers for the mass, velocity, charge, and magnetic induction. So substituting in the numbers, we have 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, which is the electron mass from the data sheet times 2 times 10 to the 5 meters per second in the question, divided by the charge in the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, times 0 0.5, which is also given in the question. Putting all of that into your calculator should give you an answer of 2.3 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. 
That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.